Review product provided by Vitcher. Over the past several years, technology such as VR has become much more mainstream in the entertainment industry, especially on the gaming side of things. In this review, we'll be talking about a product that, while different, falls into the same category of things such as virtual or augmented reality. Only in this case, it's about projecting a screen in front of your eyes. Today, I'll be reviewing the Vitcher XR glasses and how they can improve your gaming experience, especially when used with the Nintendo Switch. Let's get right into it. There's a lot of different terms thrown around these days, including VR, AR, and MR. The abbreviation XR stands for Extended Reality. The XR glasses use some small screens combined with mirrors to reflect the image so that it's in front of your eyes. So instead of looking directly at the screen, you're looking at a reflection of the screen. Now, before I get too deep into this review, we need to address the elephant in the room. This product is very expensive. Like, really, really expensive. The price of the glasses alone are on par with some of the more affordable VR headsets, but when you consider add-ons such as the dock, neckband, and charging adapter, that price will increase by a good amount. The good news is that they do have a variety of packs you can choose from that already have kind of like the necessities in, depending on what you're looking for. For example, if we go ahead and look at the uh, Vitcher store, the last time I had checked this, they didn't have these two packs, which are iPhone packs. It looks like they include an adapter, meaning that you can finally use the XR glasses with an iPhone if you are an iPhone user. More importantly, though, is this dock pack, which is very likely going to be the one that you're interested in as it includes a mobile dock. And what the mobile dock does is it will enable you to use the XR glasses with the Nintendo Switch, but it also acts as a sort of way to play it on the go while making the system think that it's in docked mode, giving you the full 1080p experience. And the other three packs include the Cloud Pack. The Cloud Pack basically comes with a pair of XR glasses and the neckband. Full disclosure, I was not sent the neckband, so I can't tell you how it is. You're going to have to look at a different review for that. And then the Ultimate Pack includes the XR glasses, the mobile dock, and the neckband. And then there's lastly the Duo Pack. That you'll be getting if you want to be playing like multiplayer games or watching a movie with friends or family. It includes the dock as well as two copies of the XR glasses. As for me personally, the products I were sent were one pair of the XR glasses, a mobile dock, mounts for both the Nintendo Switch and Steam Deck, depending on which one you're using, as well as a lens shade that you can put over the XR glasses that just allow you to see the screen a lot more clearly. The question we need to answer is, are these really worth that massive price tag? After all, there's a big difference between something being expensive expensive and worth the money expensive. A quick look at the glasses themselves, each lens projects a 1920 by 1080 p screen at 60 frames per second. And the lens technology itself includes an electrochromic film, which you can use to darken the screen and this really helps with making the image pop a lot more. It's a feature I highly recommend to turn on at all times since it is a huge difference in quality. Best example being when you are using it outside, you almost always want to have this enabled. The glasses themselves have built-in speakers on both of the arms, as well as a 2D and 3D mode. Now, I did use a bit of the 3D mode, but full disclaimer that I have very little experience with 3D, and most of this video is focusing on the 2D mode use, especially when it comes to gaming. So if you are watching this video with the intent to pick up this pair of glasses for its 3D mode, I highly recommend clicking off this video and watching another review because this is going to be focusing on the 2D mode. But what's by far the best feature about the XR glasses, at least in my opinion, is the diopter adjustment. For those who don't know, diopter is essentially the unit of measurement that's used for prescriptions. So that's for anyone who has to wear glasses. One common annoyance shared upon any sort of headset, especially ones like VR, is that you have to wear your glasses still when you're wearing the headset. And not only can this be very uncomfortable, but it also risks scratching the lenses. And the XR glasses actually include, it's a bit hard to see, I might have an image on screen, but there's these little dials atop each lens, and they individually will adjust the diopter anywhere from 0D to negative 5D. And this is per lens, it's individual, so if you are someone who maybe you have one eye that's weaker than the other, like for me in my case, my left eye is uh, a bit weaker than my right, 
this way you can adjust each lens individually and it will look very good. It's, it's a very nice quality of life feature. And for anyone who has a prescription that falls outside of this adjustment, you can order a prescription lens, which then you just get the lens changed, and that also works. I decided to get the matte blue version, but there is also a glossy black in case that's more up your alley. The inner side of each arm is paired with a speaker, and on the outer right side is the area where you connect the cable to the glasses. Unfortunately, it is a proprietary cable, meaning that if you break or lose it, you're going to have to get it replaced. They do sell them separately on their website, but we're talking an additional 49 to 59 US dollars, which is a bit of a yikes. On the bright side, it is magnetic, and I had no issue with it. As long as you're not moving your head super crazy around, it's going to be fine. What really shocked me about this product was how clear the image itself is. I'm used to headsets with blurry displays like the original PSVR, and yes, there has been a huge improvement in the quality since then. I mean, this technology is already seven years old, but just look at the size of the screen being projected on the lenses of the XR glasses. It's no bigger than a micro SD card. I'm in no way tech savvy, so this might not be as big of a deal for those who are more knowledgeable in the current day quote unquote tech breakthroughs, but from the perspective of a more average person, it's really impressive to see how far technology's come. And this is a sort of product that requires a small screen since the main appeal is being able to take it wherever you go. It really does simulate the feeling of watching a 1080p screen, which is good because anything less would have been a huge turnoff given the price. Now, if you are wanting to use this with the Nintendo Switch, you're going to have to pick up the mobile dock. Connecting this to the Switch not only lets you play, but since the system thinks it's in docked mode, you get the full 1080p image. The biggest problem with reviewing these sorts of products is that in order to get the full idea of what it's like, you need to actually be using it. But what I can do is edit in a mock-up of sorts for what it looks like. It's kind of like a personal movie projector you can take anywhere with you that always stays in your line of vision. With that said, there are a couple issues that immediately came up when I was using it. Some of them can be fixed with adjustments, others are more so a problem with the tech itself. While the image quality is 1080p, the edges of the display often suffer from a slight blurriness. You have to adjust the positioning of the glasses in order to properly focus on your edges, and by doing that, it makes it harder to see the other side. Like, if I move the glasses to see the left side, all of a sudden more of the right side gets cut off or is increased in blurriness. And since most games have HUD elements, your experience varies from game to game. Sometimes the HUD elements are either too small or too far to the right or left of the screen while within that blur range. As far as I can tell, this is mostly because of the positioning, angle, and distance from your eyes to the lenses. It sort of ends up cutting off the sides. I want to quickly go back to the on-screen example here just to show you a bit more of what I mean because it's already difficult enough to show you what the glasses do, but it's even harder to like edit up a version of what I see when it comes to the blurriness. So basically, most of the center is completely fine, but you'll notice that in my example, on the left and right, I have added a bit of a blur effect that intensifies as it gets further to the ends of the screen. And it's more so a linear or directional blur that pops up. And what happens is when you move the glasses more to the edge of the lenses so that like the left side of the screen is touching the left edge of the lens that linear blur greatly intensifies so it seems to have to do with the fact that not all of the screen can be viewed at once given the lens's size now this does have to do with as i said like how you are looking at the glasses how far you are the angle that you are viewing it from. And basically, the XR glasses, they come with several nose pieces you can use, and each one is different, so you can test out whatever works. So what I ended up doing was sliding off the default nose piece that it already comes paired with, and putting on this one right here, which is basically a no nose piece piece, and it surprisingly fixes a lot of the problems. I hope that was explained in a way that made sense, it's kind of hard to show it on screen. I also want to mention that in my previous example with the nose piece, there is a very tiny bit of blur on the top or bottom screen as well, depending on how you adjust it. If you're trying to look at the top, 
then a bit of the bottom gets cut off and is a bit blurry. But without the nose piece, both the top and bottom are very clear, and the only blur I ever felt was on the left side, which I do talk a bit more about in the following clip. While removing the nose piece does help with this issue, unfortunately there's still the whole problem of part of the screen being blurry. I couldn't find a sweet spot where both the right and left screen were crisp. In my case, it's always the left side that's a bit blurry, and I can adjust it so that the left side is clear, but first, it doesn't really work given how I wear them. It's a position that does, does not work out. And also, the right side's then blurry. So there's that whole issue of no matter how you are playing, there is going to be a bit of blur on the left or right. Now, it's not a huge amount, but it is to the point where if you're playing a game that has, you know, a small HUD or just a lot of HUD elements on it, it's going to make it a bit annoying. Games are still playable, but again, if there's too much UI on that side of the image, or if it's too small, it makes certain titles harder to play. I played through a lot of different Switch games when testing these glasses out. Naturally, I spent some time on the Great Sky Island of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, the Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town remake, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, and a lot of time in the more recent Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life remake. But the game I enjoyed playing the most was actually Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I managed to catch up on all of the recent waves of the booster course packs, 3 starring 150cc, mirror mode, and 200cc. One of the reasons I found it so immersive was because this is a game without many HUD elements, and the few that are there are big enough to see very clearly. In fact, these sorts of games would work best with the XR glasses, as well as ones that allow you to play with the HUD elements off, best example being Tears of the Kingdom. Although, you'll still have moments where the slight blur issues will surface, like whenever you're opening the inventory. On the other hand, a game such as, let's say, Terraria isn't very fun to play unless you go into the options to enlarge all of those HUD elements. Immediately after receiving this product, I was told to install an update which included a 3 degrees of freedom feature. Basically, it lets you rotate your head while keeping the screen in place. According to the people I was in contact with, you have to quickly press the smaller button on the left arm three times. At first I had a lot of problems with this, I wasn't sure if it was a bug or me doing it incorrectly. But it turns out that if you press the button quickly, it doesn't register as a press, you have to press and hold it down for a bit of time before releasing. The same thing goes for the three button presses you do, you need to give it a bit of time in between button presses. So rather than click click click, it's click and hold, click and hold, click and hold. I think it's too picky with what does and doesn't count as a press. Personally speaking, I think they should rework this a bit so you don't have to hold it down as much. For quite a while I was convinced that the issue stemmed from a bug since they kept reassuring me that I just wasn't clicking it fast enough. This is more of a nitpick though, and honestly, I usually use it with the default setting. With that said, the fixed screen option does kind of work as a sort of bypass to the whole issue with one side of the screen being blurry since you can just kind of like turn your head to look at the blurry part. However, that means that whenever you're using this, there's always going to be some sort of the part of the screen that's cut off. Another minor problem with this feature is that if you move your head too quickly, the screen will sort of glitch out because it's trying to recalculate the positioning of the screen in relation to where your head's currently angled. Aside from that, everything else works fine. Pressing the short button down once toggles the electrochromic film on and off. Most of the time you'll really want to be using this since it makes a huge difference in image clarity. And two presses of the short button will change the function of the lawn button. By default it's for brightness adjustment, its other purpose is to raise or lower the volume of the speakers. The speaker quality is very good. These XR glasses were actually part of a collaboration with the audio company Harman. But since the sound comes from built-in speakers on the arms of the glasses, the audio bleed is going to be more than your average pair of earbuds. It will be noticeable if you're using them in a very quiet place. The overall build of the glasses is very sturdy, and while it won't be getting any massive points in the stylish category, it means that you don't have to worry about them breaking anytime soon. The product also comes with a case which will ensure that the glasses stay undamaged as you travel, and it is a very good case very solid. Unfortunately, there is no case to use for the mobile dock or switch, so you're going to need a backpack or something if you plan on uh, playing the switch with the XR glasses on the go 
or if it's something, you know, like the Steam Deck. With that said, the box that the mobile dock comes in is very sturdy to the point where you could maybe get away with using this as the case. The product works surprisingly well when used outside. Even without the electrochromic film, the screen is visible, but turning this feature on is highly recommended as it makes a huge difference in clarity. So long as you're not purposely looking at the sun or another super bright light source. And if that still isn't enough, you can also order the lens shade to put over the glasses, but it comes at the cost of not being able to see what's in front of you. In most cases, the electrochromic film will be more than enough. One common issue with any sort of headset is how even half an hour of use can cause eye strain and discomfort, and while it's something I've experienced with VR headsets, in the few sessions where I was playing games for one to two hours, my eyes never felt fatigued or strained. I'm no expert when it comes to technology, but I think it has to do with how these XR glasses use birdbath optics to project the screen in front of you. So basically, your eyes aren't looking at the screen itself as opposed to using a phone or other device. The company frequently likes to say that it's the equivalent of a 120-inch size screen, which I assume is to entice people to go out and buy it. But honestly, it depends on where you are looking and how you're using it. I mean, if there's a wall in front of me and it's really close, that's not going to feel like a 120-inch screen, as opposed to if I was using it, for example, like outside. In fact, here's a quick segment of me holding the Nintendo Switch, and at this distance, the Switch screen is almost perfectly aligned with the screen that I'm seeing, so it'll give you a bit of a better look as to the general size of the screen. Let's talk more about the mobile dock. Since the XR glasses themselves use a USB-C cable, it means that devices which use USB-C, such as phones, don't need this accessory. All you do is plug the glasses into your device and bam, you can watch your favorite Netflix shows or YouTube videos. But using the mobile dock expands this to include any sort of device using HDMI. Computers, TV sticks, and of course, gaming consoles. It also includes two separate ports in case you have the duo pack and want to watch a movie or play a game with friends or family. They also have mobile docks for both the Switch and Steam Deck, the latter of which doesn't even need the mobile dock since it has a built-in USB-C port. However, since this dock also functions as a power bank, using it for extra playtime on the Steam Deck especially is highly recommended. The Nintendo Switch adds a couple more steps to the connection process. Simply plugging the glasses into the USB-C port of the system won't work. First, we'll insert both the console and mobile dock into the mount. Next, attach the magnetic side of the cable into the XR glasses, with the other end going into one of the two glasses ports. Now all you have to do is attach this short USB-C cable to the switch, with the other end going into the mobile dock. The switch will think it's docked, giving you the full 1080p experience. The four lights on top of the power bank will show how much power is left in the dock. On average, it provides six hours of extra playtime on the Nintendo Switch, and three hours for the Steam Deck. In order to charge the power bank, all you have to do is insert your USB-C charging cable, like so. Obviously, you need to have a charger that meets the voltage requirements, if not, the device won't charge. So, do I recommend this product? The biggest issue with the XR glasses is that they do one thing, and while that one thing is done tremendously well, it's a thing that kind of falls under a very niche category. So unless this is something that you were specifically looking for and you need to get it, there's no real rush to go out and buy them. Honestly, I saw a video from Alex of Nintendo Life and he best described it. It really is a luxury item for most people. Not to say that this isn't worth the price, but even if you're a hardcore gamer, a lot of the scenarios in which you'd benefit from using this product are things that are already solved with the Nintendo Switch. For example, if you wanted to play Switch games in bed without waking your significant other, maybe they're a light sleeper, you could use the XR glasses as your screen since technically it is a viable option. Or, you know, you could just use the Nintendo Switch in portable mode. Even if the bright lights are an issue, you can always just turn down the brightness in the settings and use a pair of earbuds for your audio. You could even use that money to buy yourself a separate Switch since the glasses are similar in pricing. And it's not like there aren't circumstances in which getting this product is beneficial. For example, playing multiplayer games via split screen on a portable Nintendo Switch can prove to be a challenge given the screen size. And this is a situation where using the XR glasses would greatly improve the experience, since each player would have their own screen. Of course, it means you would need an additional pair of glasses, but depending on your everyday lifestyle, this could apply to you. 
Another common issue with using a Nintendo Switch or other portable device in bed is having to hold it up to see the screen. I sleep on my side, so usually that's how I hold my system. Yes, it works, but after a while your arms will get tired, so I thought to instead try the XR glasses when lying down. I used the detachable Joy-Cons and my screen was projected onto the ceiling. And let me tell you, I've never felt as comfortable playing Nintendo Switch games than I did at that moment. And it doesn't even come close. If I could only choose one way to play my games with the glasses, it would be that. Before I knew it, I had played over an hour of races in Mario Kart. And sure, if you were solely viewing this as a product meant for gaming, there's a lot less value to it. But you also need to consider that almost any device that uses USB-C or HDMI will be compatible with these glasses. In my honest opinion, this is where most of the value of this product lies. Not on the gaming side, but on things like, for example, watching YouTube videos, movies, TV shows, and more importantly for me, anime. And considering I watch a ton of anime, this is another thing I'd likely use the glasses for. Unlike video games, film doesn't rely on HUD elements, with the exception of subtitles, but the only bit of blur I've ever experienced was with the sides. I watched a few episodes of the most recent ZOM 100 anime and could read the subtitles just fine. Unfortunately, this is one of those products that I feel like everyone should be able to try at least once in their life to really get a feel as to whether it's made for you or not, but given the price, that is very unlikely. Now, if you still do want it and you just don't have enough money, my best piece of advice for you is to simply wait a couple years. This sort of technology has a habit of getting much more advanced as time flies, and this usually leads to huge discounts on current products, while future ones tend to be not only a lot more affordable, but also much more powerful. That's going to be all for this product review. Once again, huge shout out to Vitcher for sending me the XR glasses for free. Truth be told, this review was a very long time coming. I was actually sent them way back in May and I'm only getting to the review now. So again, thank you so much for your patience. I don't ever do these sort of on-camera videos because I'm not very used to it and I don't know if I'm really that good at it, but if you enjoyed seeing this and you want to see more, then I guess let me know in the comments and maybe I'll include some more of these on-camera segments in some of my other videos. And also for those worrying that this channel is suddenly going to become a like tech review channel, uh, don't worry, this is just one of those cases where I got a email from a company which had a product that actually was relevant to said channel. And I had looked at some reviews about the glasses, and it seemed like a very interesting product that I genuinely wanted to review. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I've been Nintendo Black Crisis, and I'll see you all next time.